Goedemorgen, uh, welkom, uh, of goedemiddag eigenlijk. Uh, welkom bij deze webinar. Uh, deze webinar doen we met Hyperfit, uh, met uh, Jeremy Teek. Uh, en zal verder in het uh, Engels zijn. Uh, dus uh, ik ga nu verder in het Engels. For the presenters, uh, my name is uh, Paul Keizers. I'm an Office 365 uh, specialist at Wartel. Um, we are doing this webinar together with uh, Jeremy Take, uh, who is uh, uh, presenting for Hyperfish. Um, yeah, we uh, we want to have a fun and a nice webinar uh, and talk a lot about the product Hyperfish. Jeremy, can you introduce yourself? Sure, thanks Paul, and thank you for attending the webinar. Uh, I'm Jeremy Thake, the VP of Product Technology here at Hyperfish, so I'll be um, discussing and taking questions for you guys to do with Hyperfish. Unfortunately, I can only speak in the English language, so you'll have to bear with me on that, but um, I'll let Paul do the introductions for you in native. Yeah, no, no problem, Jeremy. And if uh, questions are there or afterwards, they can always uh, mail me uh, uh, at the end, uh, last slide, uh, my email address is uh, presented. Okay, uh, just a little story about Wartel. Uh, Wartel is a, a Microsoft Gold partner in different uh, uh, um, uh, different uh, environments uh, like uh, Windows, uh, Cloud, uh, and more. Uh, Wartel is about 20 years old, so it's a very interesting uh, company and very in innovative. Um, to get into uh, the problem most companies have is uh, there is no life ma uh, cycle management. Uh, the, uh, the profiles are incomplete, inaccurate, uh, use of lack of uh, information. Um, and what the most problem is that you cannot find anything back. Uh, if I'm incorrect, please correct me, uh, Jeremy. No, that, I mean, that's a very common thing that you'll see in organizations is around that information. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you. and this is a very big common question we see. And the, the main reason uh, this comes up a lot is that sometimes there's an effort put on collecting people information when a user on boards in a company, and typically that will be their basic information like their current job title and department, but users change, they get promoted, they move to different departments, or in some cases organizations don't do this initial onboarding and detail update. And so we do find this is a problem in organizations that it's either just not there at all or in a lot of cases it is kind of incomplete or can have the wrong data in it. Yeah, what a lot of companies also is that uh, when they come in, uh, they don't know anybody in the organization. So it's it's very relevant to put in the correct information. Uh, I moved on one slide uh, uh, further. Um, I don't know if people know exactly what Active Directory is. Uh, for uh, the Dutch people, it's like an address book uh, with your uh, profile information in there. Um, and most of them are, yeah, are not complete. Uh, that's exactly uh, the biggest problem. And in the f near future, we will need more and more uh, information in the Active Directory. Uh, and to do that, the Hyperfish is a, a tool which you can use for that. Um, and uh, the pain is like losing productivity, high, t high uh, cost. Uh, nobody knows uh, anything about uh, who's in the organization and uh, where the decision makers are. If I'm, uh, please uh, add on, uh, Jeremy, if you are, <laughs> if you think I'm doing, uh, 
I'm missing uh, some uh, things in it. Yeah, I think the most common thing we see there is the the notion that uh, without a manager field, for instance, it's very very hard for organisations to actually be able to automate a lot of their business processes. Whether you're using out of the box technology like SharePoint Designer or Microsoft Flow, or if you've purchased something like Nintex or K2 or other workflow platforms, yeah. without that manager field, if you've got a business process, you, you can't really have it automatically go and get approval from the person who submitted the business process approve, approval. Uh, so it kind of relies on the person submitting all those business forms to kind of enter someone to do, go do the approval, which can often either be the wrong person or people can kind of bypass assist processes by doing that, by having their peer approve something for them. And so that seems to be the, the biggest kind of uh, pain that we we see organizations struggling with is specifically around kind of the manager field. But, um, you know, as we mentioned in that previous slide, not having the profile information or it being inaccurate and users not being able to find it does increase the requests coming from the IT pro, uh, sorry, from the end users to the mm -hmm. help desk, um, which can kind of really bog down users and organizations uh, with this process that, you know, shouldn't really be there. Exactly, exactly. Um, what uh, What is currently done? Well, Delve is one of the most used products. Uh, uh, still, I see in Holland uh, a lot of companies having trouble uh, working with Delve because they are a bit scared about their information. Uh, but it's all uh, security scoped, so it, I think it's one of the best tools to use when you want information directly uh, from your uh, end users next to you. Uh, to show information, but again, it's uh, relying on the information you have in your pro profile. So that's very important. Um, and also, the skills, uh, etc. It's all very important to have in your profile. So when you're searching for something in your organization for someone, uh, you need this uh, profile information. Uh, if you want to add uh, extra, please do, uh, Jeremy. No, I think that's great. The uh, that kind of covers the different options that we we see that out there by our customers for sure. Yeah. Okay. What we see is that uh, knowledge workers spend 15 to 35 percent of their time searching for information in uh, in Office 365 in the environment in SharePoint and uh, they cannot find it so it brings a lot of uh, cost with it um, and uh, the cost of it will be around 6 million uh, euros a year so that's a lot of uh, cost uh, if you uh, look at information and you just uh, start to put it in and find the correct answers directly. Um, uh, maybe you can <laughs> add uh, some more info, uh, Jeremy. Yeah, it, this is a very interesting study that the IDC did, and they had a mythical employee organization of a thousand users that they came up with at the end of this study. They interviewed and surveyed about 300 different companies and realized that a lot of all companies users were taking a long time or actually never ever finding the information they were looking for and all this came down to um, the content not being in the right place or the content not being tagged properly or also that the the a lot of the way that people find things in organizations is based on the people pivot which is that I know Paul had created this particular document when he was in a role within the organization and I'm using that to try and find Paul based on department and maybe his job title to try and find it and because I don't know what Paul's name is in that instance and so the discovery becomes really hard and so this survey they basically um, came up and said that it would cost in terms of like physical time of people searching um, in, in salaries and so forth the, the cost would be about six million a year 
But the, the more scary part was is because they were spending so much time trying to find the information they needed or, or never finding it at all, the actual cost lost was over 15 million. And that was kind of a significant impact to organizations. And the study goes into a lot of detail on, on how they struggled there with those things. Okay. And uh, for example, also uh, when you look at uh, 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 Delve or in SharePoint, um, uh, when information is not uh, complete, uh, you can, uh, for, for example, in SharePoint, you can get uh, double versions of the same content. Uh, and uh, you can see uh, if you have a user profile, you will have the, the same issue. Uh, the profile is not complete, uh, or the manager is still in the old department, like things like that, that happen a lot. Uh, so the business info is missing and it's a great impact. Uh, for example, 68% doesn't have a mobile number in their uh, profile. 80% doesn't have uh, a photo. So it's uh, when you are in an organization, a big organization, it's always important to have a photo. So when you meet somebody, you can see who it is uh, and where you should look at. Uh, and you already told us 64% doesn't have a manager uh, filled in, so you don't know who to reach out to. Um, and as a result, 800, uh, 800 hours are lost uh, finding contact info, so that's really, really a lot. And 2,000 are, uh, hours are spent uh, finding this, uh, people physically because there's no photo, no information and 2,000 hours are spent finding meeting participants. So that's a whole lot and if your profile is complete you will find more info and you will uh, 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 you will don't need to spend so much hours on finding the correct info. The estimated cost is, uh, I just translated it from dollar to euro, so it's 264, 160 euros uh, for organization with 1,000 employees, so that's really a lot where you can invest in a, in a tool like Hypervision and bring the cost uh, very much down. Um, the return on investment is uh, is really huge this slide i i got from you uh jeremy can you uh um, add some comments to it yeah one of these things that comes up is in terms of the roi of having complete profiles a lot of customers you know kind of say that, you know we, we we've had this issue for a while it doesn't really seem to impact us and so how can you show uh, how can you let us show to our business that the, having complete profile information is important? And one of the big things that comes up is the ability to kind of highlight, okay, well, if profiles were complete, what kind of cost savings would we have just on time if we had like a thousand people in the organization on an hours per year perspective? And so this simple slide um, takes a few of those scenarios, whether it's um, trying to find people for meetings, and so that if the manager field isn't populated and maybe the, um, the job titles and department aren't populated, it's very, very hard to go discover people in an organization if you don't know all their names or maybe they've got awkward spellings or um, Chris Johnson, who is our CTO, when he, when he was at Microsoft, we both worked at Microsoft together, there was 18 Chris Johnsons at Microsoft and um, sometimes when a new Chris Johnson joined the organization, it wasn't that clear that which Chris Johnson you'd met maybe on a virtual meeting or maybe in person. And so having the photo populated well, obviously is the most important thing there if you've met that Chris Johnson in person. But also having the appropriate department and job title there is another way to differentiate whether you have the right Chris Johnson or not. And so yeah. this would take a, an additional amount of time. Um, and if you start kind of adding that up, it really does start to impact your organization on, a, on a quite a big scale. 
And so that's where it's very important for those that information not just to be there, um, but also for it to be up to date and um, representative to users inside of your organization. Exactly, exactly. Um, so now you, you take over for the, uh, the solution of Hyperfitch, how it works and what it does. So take it away. <laughs> Sure, I'll um, just quickly switch presenters and hopefully, can you just let me know, Paul, when you can see my screen? Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Uh, so, you know, we've really talked, well, Paul's talked about this notion of how not having that uh, profile information can be uh, uh, painful to you as an organization and can cost you, you know, a lot in terms of kind of time. Uh, of your employees, but also a significant cost as well. And so with Hyperfish, what we really aim to do is complete your directory um, so that you can kind of enhance the way your employees engage with the organization across the different technology sets that you'd be using. Ideally, they'd save time because they'd be able to discover people quickly. The IT help desk wouldn't be so bogged down. Um, but I think the most important thing is, is if you're in Office 365 or you're planning to go to Office 365, there are a lot of technology services that are actually switched on by default, whether it be Delve, whether it be Microsoft Teams, whether it be things like Office 365 Groups that have things like organizational charts that will not work if you don't have the manager field populated. Uh, we'll have things like photos pretty much in every single experience that you have uh, to show you who the document author is or who the person is that posted the comment and not <laughs> excuse me, not having appropriate photos in there can really kind of prevent the experience that you would expect that you saw when Microsoft pitched Office 365 to you as an organization. But the important part is, is that with Hyperfish, uh, we also do this with SharePoint Server and Exchange Server and Active Directory Server on-prem and so if you're still on-premises or in a hybrid scenario, we also unlock the value of those products that do require those things as well. And to the question um, in the Q&A window around Active Directory profile attributes and SharePoint user profile attributes, I'll cover that here because I, I'll show some of that in, in demo. Essentially the way that Delve works is there are a lot of, there's a lot of data there that comes from um, your Active Directory, whether it's your full name, your display name, um, whether it's your mobile number and your job title, those get synced up to a SharePoint user profile property record that Delve uses for each individual within the company. So when a user wants to update something that isn't in Active Directory but is shown in the user profiles in Delve, such as skills, past projects, education, or you're about me, those things don't have a link and a store back in Active Directory. And so you do have to maintain your profile information in two places in the out-of-the-box experience. And updating your profile photo in Delve um, is no easy, simple task really. Like you have to kind of know where you're looking in inside the Delve interface, which a lot of users don't understand. And there's quite a few clicks to it. And you still don't get that validation uh, that you would like. And so, really, with, with Hyperfish, we're able to unlock that value regardless of, of, of where you are because when you hit our profile screen, you basically get the ability to update not just your Active Directory profile information, but also your SharePoint user profile information, which means that your experience across of Office 365 um, is fixed. Okay. And so the way that we do this is we, we analyze your directory so we'll go through your Active Directory in essentially a read-only mode and we'll look at all of your users for the basic attributes and see whether the fields are missing um, and, and in our free analyzer you'll actually be able to do that right now if you go to uh, um, a URL we'll show at the end of this presentation. In the full product, we, as well as showing missing information, we'll actually look at the rules that you've defined in the settings and if a user's profile doesn't adhere to the rules, we'll also flag, flag those things as not being correct. And then the big thing about us compared to, say, you having one of those 
previous systems that we talked and saw that customers do, such as you know an, a, a standard form that maybe they've got in SAP, or maybe uh, you know they've got an InfoPath form where someone could go, is that we actually go and proactively collect that information directly off users. So we'll send users an email on a uh, regular basis with the profile information that is missing. We'll um, reach out to them on Skype for Business and in the future we'll reach out to them via Microsoft Teams. Right now we have a Slack bot that the Slack bot can reach out to your users and, and ask them or let them know that maybe their profile file has been populated. And then those users can very easily respond to those bots or respond to the emails to actually go through and, and update that information or they can click on the button and jump into our profile editor page. Now in addition to that, some of the things we're working on to kind of expand the the offerings is we'll actually intelligently suggest things too. And so as an example there, we know that a lot of users have their accurate information inside of email signatures. In an email signature, um, you'll have your job title, your mobile phone field, uh, your department name, and what Hyperfish will be able to do is reach out into that email signature and make suggestions. For instance, that Oh, we noticed that you have your job title in your email signature, but it isn't in your profile. Would you like us to add this? And they can just click yes or no, and that will make that change in the user's profile um, to have their job title updated. So there's all these different things we're doing to try and make sure we source the information correctly. But the key part about this is, is that we start this conversation uh, and collect the information directly from the user. So although we're automating this process, there is the user that's involved. A lot of customers ask uh, why we why this is any different to any of the other solutions on the market, and I guess the the way that we talk about this is um, Brian Cook was the co-founder of Nintex, and Chris Johnson is our C CTO, is the additional co-founder, um, and came from Microsoft. And when they started this company nearly a year and a half ago now, they really leveraged what was available to us in the cloud technology uh, and especially in this notion of having this conversation via email or those chatbots that you kind of see instead of Slack and Skype for Business and in the future teams. But also that we're leveraging a lot of the uh, aspects of artificial intelligence that are available now as a service inside of Azure. And so for instance as one example when I upload a profile photo I can actually reject photos in, in Hyperfish directly in that profile update page uh, so that if they try and upload a picture of a cartoon of a dog or even if they took a photo of their dog and tried to use that as a profile photo the artificial intelligence within Hyperfish which is underlying using Azure would actually tell the user when they try to upload their photo uh, that that photo was inappropriate for the organization or maybe that if they try to update uh, with a photo with more than one face in it, maybe a team photo or maybe a photo of them and their children, that that might be something the organization doesn't want the user to be able to do and that the photo should just be of that one individual. And so we're using that of artificial intelligence um, to really push through um, to make sure that the consistency of the information like photo is, is appropriate for the organization. I see a question uh, if uh, information from other systems uh, uh, is possible to add it into the user profile. They are talking about the LMS system, the schooling system. Yeah, that's a good question. So when we, um, with our system right now, um, and I'll probably just get to that as I do the demonstration, uh, the, right now we support Active Directory and uh, from an in perspective. So when when you view uh, the profile page, right now we actually will look at all the Active Directory attributes. On the flip side of that is if uh, the Active Directory profile has information stored elsewhere, like a learning management system, uh, when you submit the information to Hyperfish, Hyperfish can go and update the learning management system. So, for example, uh, the job title, uh, if I updated that in Hyperfish, but it was important that that job title was in the learning management system, we could push the change to the LMS. 
but right now we couldn't go and read that job title if we knew that the learning management system had that updated. So we treat Active Directory as a source right now. Um, but I can see there that the question specifically is more around the, uh, in our case, the education history is stored and managed in a learning management system. And I'm assuming what you're uh, wanting to do is then push that education history um, from your learning management system into um, into the Delve profile so that you can see the, the education history there. Um, in that instance right now we wouldn't support that scenario but one thing that we do have the ability to do um, is map um, drop downs that people can be op selected based on other systems. So potentially what you, we could do uh, as a proof of concept with you guys is show you how when they go to their profile into the form it would show their education and they could choose um, which of those things they want added into their profile and I'll get to that when I show show the demo. So if that still doesn't answer the question once I show the demo please feel free to ask another question in the in the window. Just a question from me uh, Jeremy. Um, if, uh, for example, you have uh, on-premise uh, Active Directory uh, and uh, uh, a hybrid scenario, will it work with Hyperfish as well? Yes, yeah, sure. So the way that we work um, with Active Directory in general is that if you're in an online scenario, so you just have Office 365, uh, we connect to Azure Active Directory directly using the Microsoft Graph and everything you do with Hyperfish you're authenticated and using your Active Directory user. But quite honestly most of our customers are in an uh, on-premises or a hybrid scenario where they have a you know, hybrid basically means you have Active Directory on-premises and you also have Azure Active Directory online and then SharePoint online maybe and maybe you even have some SharePoint server still and maybe you've got some Exchange server and some Exchange online and it's truly hybrid. The way that Microsoft connects up Active Directory Server and Azure Active Directory Online is for a tool called AD Connect. Previously, they were things like DirSync and AD Sync. Uh, those are actually deprecated now. Um, so if you are using those tools, you would need to update those to AD Connect. And so that handles the synchronization between Active Directory Server and Azure Active Directory Online. Uh, what we do in the case of hybrid and on-premises is we will write directly and read directly from Active Directory on-premises and then we will continue to rely on the AD Connect to make those changes up to Azure Active Directory. And so we do support those hybrid and on-premises scenarios um, but we do rely on the previous kind of configurations that are already in existence with AD Connect or if you're using a more complex IDM system. Perfect, thanks. So, so on my screen right now um, I have my demo environment tenant in Office 365. This is a, a an online only org, I don't have a, a hybrid scenario configured in this particular demo environment. Um, and what you'll see here is, is that Aaron's actually an email from, in this case, the a customized name for my hyperbot which is called Nelly. So this scenario shows that a lot of companies may want to tailor what their emails come through on. And you can change the email address that it gets sent from, but you can also change the description as well. So in this case, in this organization, and this is actually a, a, one of our customers' uh, company mascot names, uh, and they so they wanted to kind of add some friendliness and some culture into updating your profiles by doing this. And so this email is essentially saying that uh, your the following information is missing inside of the the directory, and so if I went in here and I can actually reply um, directly to this email without my um, my street address in there, uh, sorry my signature in there and go uh, my street address is one Redmond Way, and if I clicked uh, send on that, now let's actually send that information back to the hyperbot. Now the scenario here, which is really nice, is that I don't actually have to uh, do this for a computer. I could respond to my hyperbot on the go um, on my iPhone or my Android device, even from my Apple Watch, which I've demonstrated in the past. 
And the ability here is that my Hyperbot has now replied back saying, okay, well, we found some changes in that email you just sent. So we've changed your street address from nothing, which is blank in the organization, to one Redmond Ray. Now, they don't have to do this all via email. Uh, we can also update all this profile information by clicking on this button here. And in the bottom left-hand corner, um, which is a little bit small in this resolution, I do apologize, is a unique link. And when I click on that link, it'll open up our profile editor, and you'll see it larger here in my address bar. This unique uh, URL is time-bound, so there is a limit on how long this will work for. And we call these magic links, and there'll be other systems you may be familiar with that use this, such as Slack. Um, if you're concerned from a security perspective, you can actually turn this off. Um, you'll notice here I was already logged in to my browser, so it's already realized Aaron is a scenario that I have. Um, but the benefit here that we see with customers using magic links is if I'm on my phone or tablet where I might not be logged in all the time with my corporate account, it gives me the ability to get to this experience quickly and update this profile information. And it reduces any friction there of kind of handling those updates. Now again, you don't have to have magic links on, you can turn those off, but uh, we do find that as an extremely useful feature for people to try and make this whole process of updating profile information very, very easy. And so if you look down here now in my profile, you'll see that that change for one Red May has been made to that profile already. But what's interesting is, is that that's still pending. The reason it's pending is that we're at, in this environment, we've actually configured it to say that we would like an approval for the street address for every employee. Now that could be because we want to make sure it ties up to one of the many offices we have in the organization, or maybe they want to validate that that address is actually a real address in the system um, on, a, on a human check basis. But you can see also here that I can see all the other information that I'm collecting in this organization. So if I wanted to go through and make sure that you see here that these fields are required, I have to pick a title. So I'm going to be an IT manager in this case, and I'm going to be in information technology from a department side, and I'm going to click Save. Now you'll see here when I click Save on these environments that that's now going to also come back and say that these changes are pending. Now, my provers, when they go into the system, uh, when they actually go into the product itself, will see this screen, which gives them an update of um, the, what state the Hyperfish service is in, which I'm in run mode, so I'm sending out those emails to each individual that I've decided to pick um, to validate their profiles and let them know if there's things up to date. This is a brand new tenant. Every three months I have to go and create a new Office 365 tenant. But over time you'd start to see the history to show how complete and correct my profile information is across my organization. And when we do demos in these Office 365 tenants, because Microsoft preloads the demos with profile information, most of the users actually have this information. But hopefully after this webinar, when you run our free analyzer, um, you'll notice that this data won't show like this. And for instance, most customers will have probably like 10% of their users with manager fields populated. And most times photos are um, not up to date for a lot of organizations as well. But you'll notice on the left hand side we have this approvers aspect and you'll see now that I have the ability to approve the address of Aaron or I can bulk approve those things uh, for each individual change in the system. So I can go through and make those changes. <coughs> and then when those changes are made, essentially when I uh, refresh this page, um, sorry I wasn't in the same window there, when I refresh this page, those pending fields would have gone and the important part is, is those changes would have been made into Active Directory, or in this case, they would be made directly in Azure Active Directory Online. And then any additional fields that weren't in AD that uh, were maybe being directly pushed to user profiles could also be done as well. And so the way that we do that configuration is very, very simply um, inside of the product. We have a settings screen here where we can basically configure attributes. And in the settings here, you can see that we have those different fields represented 
inside of here. And you can see which fields these map back to in inactive directory. And for instance, if I wanted to make office location required, I could go in here and check that as required. I could also suggest that um, I want to have a particular format here for my office location. So the way I would do that is I'd go and define um, an attribute format here. So I would say this is my office location options. And the reason we do this in a separate screen is because you might want two attributes with the same types of uh, drop downs. And so I can click drop downs here and I could say, you know, Redmond uh, office and I could say um, London office and click save. And then I can actually go through into my office locations here and pick the office location as an option there. Now, if I made that required also, sorry, and now I go back to my profile page and the next time my user hits this, when they edit their employment information, their office location is now saying it's required and I can pick the office location I'm at. Now, the important part about this is that when my analyzer runs, um, if these fields were blank like they were uh, before I started this demo, it would actually send out an email prompting them for office location because you've made that required as well. So this is a really nice way of being able to, maybe in stages, go from everything being not required and then over time start to mark additional fields required and have the Hyperbot reach out to them via the email. Rather than kind of in this demo environment, you know, I'm chasing for quite a few things at once. You could like over a uh, six month period start to progressively ask for more and more information from the user. You can customize how what these field sections are called and which things are in which sections simply by kind of coming in here and editing these things. So if you wanted for instance to um, move the postal code there um, to kind of fit more of a European format we could have that at the bottom rather than how it's done from an American perspective in that instance. Now you would have noticed when you're in the form that right now I've branded this as a hyperfish scenario, but as an organization you'd probably want this branding to be on point with your, your particular color palettes. So for instance, I can go through here very easily using CSS colors, whether it's um, hex values or um, those kind of things. I can upload new images here and click preview and change the look and feel of this form to kind of meet the branding of your organization. So that's one definite advantage there. One other aspect is we can actually have images uploaded as part of the email headers as well for, for the way that that kind of communicates inside of the system. And then inside of the Hyperbot settings, you see here that I actually went through and changed that from Nelly to Hyperbot, and that was an old email that I showed you. But you could, in some instances, I've had customers where they'll put the CEO's name in there or the CTO's name to make it so that people would respond more efficiently to the emails knowing that they came from those. And again, by default, we send it from our email address, but you can change this to come from, um, you know, at contozo.com, for instance. We have the ability that we can change the approach that we send to the email to the users. So, for instance, if your organization is a bit more like uh, smaller and the culture is a bit more fun, you could change the emails to have a bit more of a, an informal uh, view rather than a formal view when you have those serious emails. And in a lot of our organizations, um, they'll, they can change the tenacity of how often they send those emails. But what we're finding with customers as well is, is that they actually keep sending those emails until the profiles are correct rather than saying, okay, we're going to make five attempts via email or via a bot to get people to update their profiles. We actually want to keep emailing them on this frequency basis until their profile is deemed complete. And so there's a lot of flexibility in, in setting up this tool um, to kind of manage and configure what fields um, you, you kind of choose. And when you do these things, um, you can start in a pilot mode, so you don't have to like run this for 10,000 users in your organization. You can actually run this in a pilot, and then you can define in um, in the permissions here, who is in your pilot. So you might want to pick to start with just using the 
IT people in your organization or maybe the people that are really interested in this are the human resources team and so you could just run a pilot with this product for your human resources team so if you're interested in a proof of concept definitely should speak to Paul and the guys at Wartel to help configure that, that proof of concept there. Uh, just a small question uh, Jeremy, is sure. it pos possible to also add a group in the pilot uh, participants or is it yes. really user? Yes, you can, you can add those in there. Um, you can also, one other question we always get is in the Hyperbot settings, um, you know, how do we make sure we don't disturb certain people? And so I can put in there um, the, my CEO, and my executives and so forth and then maybe uh, that you know they're handled in a, in a different manner than they would be via the hyperfish fish tool. Exactly. So if I just quickly um, jump back to uh, the slides, uh, one thing I just wanted to kind of highlight here was you know what this means to an organization is that it really does take your Delve profiles, your Outlook contact cards, kind of from this to something that you'd expect to see in a Contoso type environment where uh, your manager fields and your office locations and all of your information is up to date. Um, and you'll see that you know without the manager information in Dell for instance this page wouldn't have had even loaded the organization chart or uh, wouldn't have even shown the people that are connected to you based on that org chart and the documents they're working on. And much like you know the differences here of what a contact card looks like in Outlook Online and inside of OneDrive and SharePoint compared to what it looks like once you have all that information populated. So the experience is definitely unlocked and is improved when you have all your profile information up there. Now in addition to that, um, if I just kind of jump, jump ahead a little bit, um, what I just wanted to highlight for you is that uh, there, there are three different ways to run this. Uh, as I mentioned, you can run this purely on premises. This can be run in organizations with a hybrid or it can be run in a demo I've done today, which is in a, in a cloud only view. Um, in a cloud only view with online, the way we work is our Hyperfish app is running inside of Azure data centers and we connect to Azure Active Directory and therefore you know, the products within Office 365 benefit. In an on premises or a hybrid scenario, we actually deploy an agent that talks locally to the Active Directory server and our Hyperfish service talks to that agent. This communication happens using a service account that you configure and so you can provide exactly the permissions you want your service account to have to your Active Directory on-premises and then we rely on AD Connect to then push those changes up to Azure Active Directory but we can also connect to other services such as um, SharePoint user profiles um, and by our custom scripts that get executed once we've done and committed the update, we can also update to other systems such as those learning management systems. You would just have to provide the PowerShell script to run to call the API to make those changes into the learning man management system. We are uh, working on a fully um, conversational Skype for Business chatbot as well as a Microsoft Teams chatbot right now. Our, the, we were waiting for a uh, Skype for Business API to be available to do this uh, with a full conversation, so we'll have that to demo shortly. Uh, we already talked about the LinkedIn scenario. Uh, one of the, the kind of interesting things here is um, you know, whether you'd want to take the endorsement skills that you have on your LinkedIn profile, uh, maybe if, they're over, if they've been endorsed by a certain number. So in my case, I have a lot of endorsements. Um, so you might want to take anything that's over 99 endorsements and add that to my profile automatically. You could even look at things like the job title um, that's been put inside of LinkedIn and maybe make a suggestion that your job title is not in AD, would you like to use your LinkedIn job title to progress? And so that's something we're working on from a suggestions perspective as well as email signatures there. Um, so you can see here, you know, like the work we're actively working on right now with email signatures kind of grabs the job title on the mobile phone number and makes that suggestion um, inside of the Hyperfish world. Well, so with that, a, the, the yeah, sure. We've got a question about the Hyperbot, uh, about the languages. Do we uh, support Dutch and French? 
Right, so um, right now uh, we support the character sets to change the um, the form field. So if I go back into my demo environment, uh, right now what we can do is inside of all of these forms we support the full Unicode co uh, term set. So I can adjust what we call our attributes. And so if I was in the profile field here, we could have this entire form looking in the language that you choose. Um, but that would only give you the ability to have f have one language. Um, we are working on a feature right now um, to essentially allow you in our hyperbot here that you'll be able to choose between uh, not just these three, but you could change so the emails came from a custom email template where you could specify uh, one particular language. Now, um, we are in addition to that, uh, working on full multilingual support so that when you come into here, you could set a preference via. We're going to have flags to specify a language that would all, you know, basically automatically convert all of these fields um, and all of the email conversations into the language that the user prefers. Um, that's coming in, in a few months. And in addition to that, um, what that will also mean is that you'll be able to have. Um, the preference set for the user, but you could also, uh, with the, the the multilingual support with that's coming, say that automatically know that because Aaron is in um, this particular organizational unit within your organization in AD, because we know they're in France or we know they're in Germany or we know they're in the Netherlands, we will be able to automatically assume a certain language for them. Um, so we are working very hard on the multilingual side because we know, for, especially for customers that are in regions such as the Netherlands, that uh, the English language uh, wouldn't be a preset. So um, we will definitely be notifying customers and partners once that multilingual support is available because we, uh, we know it's a common request in, in, um, inside of uh, the European market. Okay. And then this is an example um, of a report and um, essentially, you, you saw these dials, these KPIs inside of our product itself. With our free analyzer that you can run right now, uh, both on-premises and uh, hybrid and online, you can basically see what your organization's Active Directory looks like. This analyzer is read-only. We basically, uh, any user can run this within your, because every user within Active Directory has read-only permissions to the entire directory. And this will give you a nice PDF report uh, that will show you how you can run, uh, how you can see kind of how populated your profiles are. Um, and on the next page is the URL uh, we'd encourage you to use. So app.hypefish.com forward slash question mark campaign equals Wartel. Um, and if you do that, uh, you'll be able to run that three analyzer and see how healthy your, your organization is. Exactly. <laughs> and if they have questions, they can always contact me. Uh, and I will uh, ask them uh, if if I don't know it, I will uh, come back to you. Yeah, they should should absolutely. I would encourage you to email Paul and those email details there with his question. We can definitely help you guys if you have any other questions there. Um, do people have any other questions? Well, I'll just kind of jump into the GoToMeeting Q and A part as well. And if they, uh, we will send out a follow-up email uh, with the analyzer in it, or at least a URL for the analyzer. Great. Well, I appreciate your time today, Paul, and forever all the attendees here, and uh, look forward to seeing you guys uh, with questions and engage with you in more detail after this webinar. Yeah, perfect. Thanks for your time and explanation. I hope it's, it was clear. I was a bit nervous in the English in the beginning, so sorry for that. Uh, but otherwise, uh, a great demo, and uh, it really is a tool I would suggest to use. Your uh, English is far better than my Dutch. I only speak <laughs> uh, British, Australian, and American, so that's not very much of a uh, language uh, skill there. <laughs> All right, thanks. And uh, I hope you have a good working day there. Yeah, thank you. All right. Thanks, guys.